Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, Kaivalya Pada. And we're finishing up the overview of Patanjali's steps through the yoga process. Oh, we're picking up with the third chapter today, the segue from the second chapter, asana, pranayama, and how that leads into the third chapter and all the sainyama meditations in the third chapter. So let's jump into the chanting, do the opening invocation, uh, bow to the guru, one day guru nam. Charanaravinde. Om Shri Gurave Namaha. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha. Om Shri Saraswati Namaha. Om One Day. Guru Nam Charanada Vinde Sandarishita Swatma Sukhava Bodhe Nishreya Se Jangalikaya Mane Sam Sada Hala Hala Moha Shantye Aba Hupurusha Karam Shankachakra Siddharinam Sahasra Shirasam Shvetam Pranamami Patanjalam Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sharirasya Chavaidyakena Yo pakarottam pravaram uninam patanjalim pranjali ranatosmi Om Asatoma Sakamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya your ma amrutangamaya om shanti 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 om sahana babatu sahana bhunaktu Sahaviryam karavavahai Tejasvi navadi tamastu ma vidvishavahai Aum shanti 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 Aum Namo Brahma Vidyo Brahma Vidya Sambradaya Kartribyo Namo Bam Shadeshibyo Namo Mahadbyo Namo Guru Bhyaha Sarvo Paplavarehita Pragnana Ghana Pratigarato Brahmai Bahamasmi Aum Tat Aum Paramatmane Namaha Shri Patanjala Yoga Darshanam Atta Sama Atta Kaivalya Padaha Janma Oshadi Mantra Tapas Samadhi Jaha Siddhayaha Janmao Shadi Mantra Tapas Samadhi Ja Siddhayaha Jati Antara Parinamaha Prakriti Apurat Jati Antara Parinama Prakriti Apurat Namitam Aprayojakam 
Prakriti, Prakriti nam Varana Vedaha Tu Tatas Kshetrikavat Namitta Maprayojakam Prakriti nam Varana Vedas Tu Tatak Kshetrikavat Nirmana Chittani Asmita Matrat Nirmana Chit Anyasmita Matrat Pravritti Vede Prayojakam Chittam Ekam Anekesham Pravritti Vede Prayojakam Chittam Ekam Anekesham Tatra Dhyana Jam Anashanam Anashayam Tatra Dhyana Jam Anashayam Karma Ashukla Akrishnam Yoginaha Tri Vidham Itaresham Karma Shukla Krishnam Yoginas Trividhamitare Sham Tatas Tat Vipaka Anugunanam Eva Abivyaktihi Vasananam Tatas Tat Vipaka Anugunanam Eva Abivyaktihi Tirvasananam Jati Desha Kala Vyavahitanam Api Anantaryam Smriti Samskariyo Eka Rupatvat Jati Desha Kala Vyavahitanam Api Yanantaryam smriti samskari yor ekaru patvat tasam anaditvam cha ashishaha nityatvat tasam anadityam cha shisho nityatvat he tu Pala Ashraya Alambanaihi Sangrahi Tatvat Esham Abhava Abhave Tat Abhavaha He to Pala Ashraya Alambanai Sangrahi Tatvat Esham Abhave Tat Abhavaha Atita anagatam swarupataha asti adva bedat dharmanam. Atita anagatam swarupatosti adva bedat dharmanam. Te vyakta sukshmaha guna. Atmanaha Te Vyakta Sukshma Gunatmanaha Parinama Ekatvat Vastu Tatvam Parinama Ekatvat Vastu Tatvam Vastu Samye Chitta Vedat Tayoho Vibhaktaha Pantaha Vastu Samye Chitta Vedat Tayor Vibhakta Pantaha Na Cha Eka Chitta Tantram Ched Vastu Tat Apramanakam Tada Kim Syat Nachaikat 
न चायक चित्त तंत्रम चेत वस्तु तर प्रमाण कम तरा किम स्यात तत सुपराग अपेक्षितवात चित्तस्य वस्तु ज्ञात अज्ञातम तरुपरागा पेक्षित्वात चित्तस्य वस्तु ज्ञाता ज्ञातम सदा ज्ञाता चित्त वृत्तयः तत प्रभोः पुरुषस्य अपरिणामित्वात सदा ज्ञाताश चित्त वृत्तयस तत प्रभोः पुरुषस्य अपरिणामित्वात न तत स्व आभासम दृश्यत्वात न तत स्वाभासम दृश्यत्वात एक समये च उभय अनवधारणम एक साम्ये चोभयानवधारणम चित्त अंतर दृश्ये बुद्धि बुद्धे हे अति प्रसंगह स्मृति संकरह च चित आंतर दृश्य बुद्धि बुद्धे रति प्रसंग स्मृति संकर चिते चिते हे प्रति संक्रमाया तत् आकार आपत्ता स्व बुद्धि संवेदनम चितेर प्रति संक्रमाया स्तरा कारा पत्ता स्वबुद्धि संवेदनम् दृष्टर दृश्य उपरक्तम् चित्तम् सर्वार्थम् दृष्टर दृश्य यो परक्तम् चित्तम् सर्वार्थम् तत् असंख्येय वासनाभिहि चित्रम् अपि परार्थम् समहत्य कारित्वात् तरसंख्येय वासनाभिश चित्रम् अपि परार्थम् समहत्य कारित्वात् विशेष दर्शिनः आत्म भाव भावना निवृत्ति ही विशेष दर्शन आत्म भाव भावना निवृत्ति ही तदा विवेक निम्नम कायवल्या प्राप्त भारम चित्तम तदा विवेक निम्नम कायवाय प्राग भारम चित्तम तत् चिद्रेशु प्रत्यय अंतरानि संस्कारे भ्यह तत् चिद्रेशु प्रत्यय अंतरानि संस्कारे भ्यह हानम एशाम क्लेशवत उक्तम् आनमेशाम क्लेशवत उक्तम् प्रसंक्याने अपि अकुसीदस्य सर्वथा विवेक क्याते हे धर्म मेघह समाधि ही 
ಪ್ರಸಂಖ್ಯಾಕ್ಯಾತೆರ್ಧರ್ಮೇಘಸಮಾಧಿಕ್ಲೇಶಕಾಡ್ಮಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಆವರಣಮಲ ಅಪೇತ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಆನಂತ್ಯೇಯ ಅಲ್ಪ ತದಾಸರ್ವಾವರಣಮಲಾಪೇತ ಜ್ಞಾನಸ್ಞಾನಂತ್ಯೇಯಲ್ಪ ತತ್ಕೃತಕ್ರಮಸಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಗುಣಾ ಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಅಪರಾಂತ ನಿರ್ಗ್ರಾಹ್ಯ ಕ್ರಮ ಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮಾಪರಾಂತ ನಿರ್ಗ್ರಾಹ್ಯ ಕ್ರಮ ಪುರುಷ ಅರ್ಥ ಶೂನ್ಯ ಗುಣಾ ಪ್ರತಿಪ್ರಸವ ಕೈವಲ್ಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾ ಚಿತಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥಶೂನ್ಯ ಗುಣಾ ಪ್ರತಿಪ್ರಸವ ಕೈವಾಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾ ಚಕ್ತಿಶಕ್ತಿರ್ತಿಪಾತಂಜಲಯೋಗದರ್ಶನೆ ಕೈವಾಯ ಪಾದೋ ನಾಮ ಚತುರ್ಥ ಪಾದೀಪಾತಂಜಲಯೋಗಸೂತ್ರ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಉದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಗ್ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಅಂಗಸ್ ಓ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ six angas we glossed over so of uh, ashtanga yoga angas the limbs so eight limbs right uh so and just a reminder if anybody's uh tuning in and they haven't been here so sutra 428 is telling us that we we want to try to eliminate all our patterning all our habitual tendencies uh uh more specifically all our moments where we we tune out and we slip into autopilot we go unconscious we go on autopilot we're not paying attention and what our good habits and our bad habits so called you know good and bad uh the take over um so we've been trying to you know get rid of reduce the the energy the inertia of the bad habits and oh, sorry and increase the energy of the good habits because you know for us beginners in yoga that's the way that's going to help us to um get a footing and get started and make progress but eventually we just want to be conscious and transcend uh our projections about right and wrong and take in more of the whole picture more of the data of what's going on all the different elements of what's interacting right 
uh, so so we can be and just be conscious and choose uh, what seems more appropriate, right? Because there's always going to be uh, what one person likes, another person is not going to like, right? So it's never it's never black and white, like uh, our minds want to kind of. It's easier for the mind to carry around a black and white right and wrong. It takes more um, presence and more fluidity in the mind. Uh, you have to be present and fluid with the circumstances and the specific instances of what's happening in order to, to keep your ideas fluid. So it's just natural that we, we you know, a little mental laziness uh, or attachment to certain ideas, we, we develop these preferences and concepts of right and wrong. And then whenever we're in autopilot, that's what's operating. Um, so Hanam Esham, Klesha Vaduktam, Patanjali tells us to just keep doing all the same things we've been doing. So that's why we're reviewing the outline of the yoga from chapters one, two, and three. Uh, so at, in uh, chapter two, where we have like the main components of practice we have create what we call kriya yoga and ashtanga yoga last week we went over kriya yoga in depth uh, so you can refer to last week's uh, video if you want to review that uh, and ashtanga yoga the other component which has the eight limbs not the primary series intermediate and advanced but the actual yama niyama asana Pranayama, Pratyahara, and Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, right? So Asana, Pranayama, the, our main uh, tools that need to really, that we focus on. And through the Asana and the Pranayama, we uh, hopefully gain more footing in the Yama and the Niyama. We study the Yama and Niyama and we do our best, but it's really by learning to, to be clear with ourself, be, to be able to understand the wisdom in the body, the wisdom you know, uh, that's deeper than our intellect, working with our body and our energies, asana and pranayama. Right? We, we become naturally uh, more qualified. This is the the method that's been passed down to us from uh, the, the teachers before, like Krishnamacharya, Patavi Joyce, his teacher, uh, even the great transcendental sage, Adi Shankaracharya, who taught the Advaita Vedanta that the, the ultimate supreme truth is that it's all one. Everything's already perfect. And, but he didn't teach that just because it's all already perfect that you abandon practice. He taught that the practices are used to help you uh, remove the ignorances in your mind that, that uh, prevent you from being able to see that. So until you have the wisdom, the practices are what we use to uh, give us something constructive to do uh, while the mind doesn't have the clarity to just leap uh, off the top of the mountain, right, and start soaring towards the stars, right? Before you can do that, uh, we have to climb up to the mountain, the top. And so asana and pranayama is a very tangible method for us. Uh, asana, you know, we learn that when we move the body, we're moving energy, and when we move the body, we learn that the body is not a two-dimensional uh, mechanical thing like hinges on the doors and, you know, that we have to move fluidly and with a roundness to our movements. And we start tuning into this more natural way of getting ourselves into the poses and feeling, you know, what is straight? The, the backbone, the spine is not straight. The body is not straight. The left and the right sides are not equal. The, they're never equal because the liver is like 
50% bigger than the spleen, or, or maybe it's twice as big as the spleen. And the heart's off to the left and the left lung is smaller because the heart's over there. The right lung is bigger because it doesn't have the heart, uh, has to, doesn't have to accommodate space for the heart. And there's always an asymmetry, but we're trying to become straight. And we learn, you know, there's no straight lines in nature. There's no straight lines in our body, but we're using this word straight Right? So we kind of break down these uh, rigid definitions, rigid impositions that we put on our body, right? learning to feel with more natural uh, fluid movement. Uh, so this is important because the mind is going to project. And when it projects, it's going to be like the bulldozer that just cuts through the landscape and forces the road to be flat and level, right? Instead of the trail, which meanders with the contour or, the, or instead of the creek, the, the ravine that flows with the contour of the land as the water comes down from through the hills down into the, the lowlands. Uh, this is how we need to move. And that process, that, that's like, you know, it's, um, it's like grammar school for the mind to learn how, how not to project, but how to feel more. And when we get good at it, we start to be able to become a 50-50 partner with the body. Right? And I say 50-50 partner, right? Because you, you have to understand the elements you're working with. Right? Like the engineers that make the iPhone and the, the MacBook Air and uh, my, my Yeti microphone and the Tesla car and uh, you know, all these things that are being made, right? The, the engineer, the creative process, the, he has an idea of what he wants to accomplish, right? There's an idea of, there's a, there's a need to be fulfilled. And then there's elements that we have to work with, right? If we're on the yoga mat doing asanas, it's our body and our breath, our blood flow, our chi and our prana flow and our mental energies, our attitude, our emotions. Um, with the, the things that the engineer are building, uh, like the car and the, the houses, the buildings, the bridges, all these things, the electronics, their their elements are, you know, silicon chips and I don't know all the stuff. I'm not an electrical engineer, so um, I don't really know the details. But but the way the energy works inside the things that the that engineer makes, it has certain uh, things it can do and certain limits to what it can do. So the engineer, the better he understands, right? Then he becomes a partner. And he's able to mold those um, elements, those components to become what he wants them to become and to uh, achieve what he wants them to achieve. But, but, it, but it, only by understanding and being able to work with the limits of the materials. And that's the same in our body, being able to work with the limits and the unique um, uh, things that it can do, right? Limit not just limits, but also the potential that the things that it's able to do, right? That's how they're able to, you know, evolve the technology in your asana practice, your pranayama practice, or in the electrical engineering field. Uh, it's by understanding it and working with it. So asana and pranayama, right? It's it's kind of like you re you've read the user's manual, so to speak, of your body. And now you, you know how to work with the body. Now you become a qualified engineer of the body. You graduate, you reach that point where you've, you can get beyond the breathing process, not stuck in the physical, but you can get beyond the physical into that other dimension of yourself, the awareness dimension. That is not energy. 
Energy is physical, awareness. Uh, so asana, pranayama, right? And then the third chapter gives us dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Um, and one thing I'm going to uh, just go back. So I decided when I was reviewing, preparing for class, right? uh, sanyama meditation, I think, if we use the word meditation because we're it's so common in English, but we we qualify it sanyama meditation, right? That's what I've been doing this last year with uh, chapter three using this term I, I kind of coined. Uh, so we're preserving the Sanskrit, the integrity of the Sanskrit, uh, but giving us more, you know, uh, something that's not so foreign for us meditation, but, but not just meditation because then too vague. What is meditation? So actually I realized it's probably very clarifying if we do the same thing with Samapati. So last week we went over Samapati. Uh, here we go this way. Uh, Samap Samapati meditation. Right. And this we simply is when we quiet the mind. In Buddhism, they call it shamatha, shamatha. It's just quieting the mind. But the sainyama, the dharana, dhyana, samadhi, right? this comes only after you've read the user manual and you've graduated. So your whole body is participating with your awareness or supported. Not just uh, quieting the mind, the mind still uh, conditioned to be, think of itself as a separate entity from the body. So by the time you get to sign yama, that conditioning of the mind thinking it's a separate entity has, has been worn down that doesn't view itself strictly as a separate thing. It sees itself as a component of the whole thing more, at least to some degree. Sanyama. Okay. So that, that's the eight limbs. Questions, comments? Okay, Alexis, did you want to say something? Okay, Denise, okay. So then potentially gives us a list of things to, to a, a list of places we should put our Sanyama meditation. Right? The Sanyama meditation requires an object of focus. So he starts off in 317 by suggesting that we should use our yogic prowess to um, become a better listener, to become more aware of the mind projecting. And somebody's trying to tell you something and then right away, you know what they're saying. And then as they're talking to you, you know, you're explaining to yourself <laughs> what, they're, what they're saying. I'm guilty. Right, but the, the secret here, the suggestion here is to, to become aware of your mind projecting to see that process your mind is projecting. Once you see that you're, you're putting ideas onto what you're listening to, then you have a chance to uh, step aside from, from those ideas, right? Even though your mind might continue to <laughs> ramble on, at least you, you catch it and you, and maybe you don't believe your own 
mind's interpretation so much and you're able to focus in a little bit more on what you're listening to. Feel what you're listening to. Be a good listener. Make the person who who's, who's needs to be heard feel like they're heard so they're, they can have their, uh, their healing. You know, they can get it off their chest. They can vent or, or they can uh, move forward through their process because they, they, they needed to express what they're experiencing just to give themselves some validation that they're on the right track, they're on the right path and they can continue going forward. Sometimes people are, are pent up, right? Sometimes our husbands or our spouses, they come home from work and they're pent up and they need to vent. And if you can just l let them vent with, without just trying to bear it, but then they, they release that pressure that they, that they can't contain and can't digest. And then you help them. So then they can, they'll feel so much better afterwards. And if you don't take it personally, but you, you view it as I'm helping, I'm just, they're, they're all wound up from what happened today and they need to get it out. They're not really taking it out on me. It's just, they need to take it, get it out. So then uh, you, you give them a huge, huge, huge uh, healing space. Uh, so 317, become a better listener. At least try to notice how your mind projects. We don't need to expect, have set the bar higher than we can reach. Uh, step by step, we can improve little by little. Uh, sometimes by leaps and bounds. Okay, so 318. Uh, our mood is so important. Our mood is so important when we're doing things, the quality of what we're putting into it. Uh, so we should try to be more aware of our mood. If we're uh, jiggity, what's the word? Um, or angry or too intense, too, too bound up because you're trying too hard to, to make it happen. Uh, all these different uh, ways of being. And I think not just really the eyes, the eyes is kind of like this. For me, I feel like the center of our facial expression is the eyes, but it's really, it's inclusive. At least it me at least this much, right? The, the, the quad upper quadrant of the right side for the right eye and the upper quadrant, the left side for the left eye. It's like, it's definitely not just in the eye, you know, remove the eyelids and it's only in the eye. It's the whole expression that comes. Um, and then it's, it's most concentrated through the eye where the consciousness is the spirit is looking out through the eyes, but all that consciousness is expressing itself and, and it, culminates at points you know, through the eye. So maybe you've heard some, in some yoga classes, they tell you not to scare you, the, the drishti point, don't scare your hand. I'm gonna get this pose. And the hand is scared. Uh, look, you know, be, doesn't mean you have to look a certain way, like friendly or lovingly, but it, to be aware of, of how you are being in your eyes, in your face. Let me do the next one. And uh, so the next one, 321, Patanjali, Basically, if you read it literally, the last word of that sutra is to be invisible. So to be invisible means that your presence is undetected. So this means becoming still, being 
very conscious and very subtle with uh, movements in the body and even of your, your mind, your, the energy that moves from your mind. Uh, so to be still gives us a, a reference point to act from. If, we, if we're not even aware of our own posture, like how much unconscious behavior is being, is allowed to be manifested, all the things we're doing. And so if we can become uh, more capable of settling our energy, right, then the movements we make will be more conscious. So we're going from a pre uh, grammar school, right now we're high school level. Grammar school, we got the asana and pranayama down and now we're at high school. <laughs> Becoming more aware of ourselves. I'm first aware of the, the body and the breath and how to, how to work with it, how to move our will, how to get our body and our will to work together. And now we're looking more at, you know, the, our spirit a little bit more, our emotional body a little more. When we listen, uh, what kind, what flavor of, uh, of energy are we, um, is behind our, our actions or behind our thoughts or behind our our words when we speak. And so we're aware of our face and then at least we, we, have, we have more of an idea of what kind of emotional flavoring we're putting out into the world and experiencing for ourselves also, right? The same energy, if you're friendly to somebody else, you're genuinely friendly to somebody don't then also you experience that genuine friendliness within yourself. That's a, that's the way you're experiencing your own uh, life, your own presence, the same way you're putting out to other people is the same way you're, you're experiencing for yourself. So the, the level of becoming more conscious of ourselves, what, how we're living life, is increasing and coming to this point of, of being able to be still right before we act then we really have a, a much more solid foundation for choosing what to do and so that's the next sutra right from 321 to i think it's 322 let's see Questions, comments? Okay. Right, so 322, right? Patanjali is talking about thinking about the cause and effect of what we do. If we don't have this point of these, these foundation threes uh, of being aware of our, our mood, our emotional state, you know, or the state of our bodily energy. Uh, and it's just moving around unconsciously or out of control. You can't control yourself because there's so much energy bubbling up like the geysers at Yellowstone National Park, right? They just bubble up and you can't, can't sit still. It's like your own self bursting out. <laughs> It, uh, if we've created such a volatile subconscious that it's, it bubbles up and it's beyond our control, so to speak. Um, so getting a little bit of a handle on that, then we have a stillness, then we step forward out of the stillness. There's a huge opportunity to be more clear, to be more conscious. 
So 22, right, the cause and effect. Are we helping ourselves or are we hindering ourselves? That's the main thing. Or others. We can't necessarily know all the effects that are going to happen from each and every little thing we do. But at least we make a, a conscious effort to, to think things through a little bit. To try to un, start to learn to understand uh, how our choices are either hindrances or, or supportive uh, factors towards uh, the, creating a life that we want to create, create, reaching our goals. For example, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that smart. <laughs> Who's got a good example? You know, like uh, you really want to uh, uh, m climb up the, the corporate ladder at work. And so you, maybe you have some impulses that would tempt you to be dishonest, maybe to take credit for, for some of the, the ideas or, or work that some of the other people in your in your, uh, your, your, uh, your department, you know, are doing. Um, and then when you get the opportunity to talk to your boss, right, you present the ideas and you take the credit that your department did, right? So that maybe that's a temptation. Um, but uh, when, when the other people in your department, you know, find out that you did that, and they bring that to attention. I don't know, is this a good example or not? This is too like, I'm going off on a, <laughs> on, on a uh, fictitious soap opera. <laughs> but then, you know, it causes problems for you, right? Because you, you did something, you've, you had an impulse to act in a certain way that seemed like it's going to give you a gain. But because it wasn't f straightforward, it wasn't forthright, it was dishonest. Um, it, it came around to, to bite you. Uh, I don't know. We could talk about making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the morning for your kids before school, but that's probably, yeah, even more outlandish of a, of an example. So you get the idea, right? Anybody want to help, help us out? We'll go to the next one. Okay. This this year, you guys have to start. I'm gonna hold you to uh, having more input <laughs> or questions. So potentially has two more things to say uh, for the Sanyama meditation in in this section of Sanyama meditations. Uh, one is he refers to the, the four noble qualities, the Brahma Viharas. He says, make sure those, those are coming along well. Don't forget. Uh, you're, I know you're an advanced yogi and you're starting to think you're cool, uh, but don't forget what's, what the foundation of everything is. And that's the, the friendliness, the compassion, the joy, and the equanimity that I told you about in Sutra 133 way back. Right? That was way back there. Uh, don't forget, that's important still. Because uh, then, you know, basically creates a much friendlier environment, psychological environment for you, much more natural tendency to do things that are going to work out well, to avoid 
doing things that are going to cause problems and uh, help you in your relations with other people. And if you're more inclusive and friendlier, thoughtful and more joyous, then the people around you are going to be more willing to support and help and work together with you. I listened to Sadhguru one day, one, one video, he's talking uh, to uh, some business people, big business people. He likes to talk with big people uh, because big people are more influential of, with more people. Uh, and the guy is asking him, uh, because Sadhguru does, he runs his, his entire organization on volunteer help. And uh, the guy is asking him, how do you get them all these, how do you find all these good people? All this good help, all this good volunteer help. You don't find them, you make them. Huh? <laughs> so the guy's like, how do you make them? So like, you get them to fall in love with you, he said. You get them to fall in love with you, right? And then, so then, of course, the CEOs are like, "Hey, we don't get paid for that. That's not." <laughs> but that, of course, not not in the in the wrong sense of the way, falling in love with you, not in the affair sense of the way, but in the uh, supportive sense sense of the way. That that they 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 believe in you, they trust you, they feel your genuine love and concern for their well being. And so they're supportive of you and they want to help. I have to say, when I saw him, I, I, his, uh, his caring presence was, was definitely uh, over uh, palatable. It was tangible. It just was like, uh, and watching him like when he blessed the flowers before letting, you know, for at the end of the, the weekend and watching, it's like the intensity of his presence, focusing on what he was doing and the genuine warmth of care and love that came through him. It was really quite uh, memorable, quite moving to see somebody who's uh, gathered up enough so much like in, infinity that they, they can focus and channel that kind of uh, that that much enormous warmth and love and, and care for other people it's pretty 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 outstanding not a commercial for Sadhguru by the way but uh, and then lastly in the Patanjali's uh, usual style, he gives you just an open-ended suggestion to, to notice any and all kinds of things that, that you might need to develop in yourself. Whatever, you, whatever else you notice about yourself that needs to be, that would be useful to develop, develop it. If it seems like it would be helpful to uh, live your life more functional, with, with more success, then, then do it, develop it. It's gonna help you develop more wisdom, more compassion, then uh, by all means, don't, don't hesitate. Don't wait for Patanjali to write it down or to, to say it. If you see it, you do it. So the next list he gives is in the body. Uh, and the first three are here in the head, head centered. And again, he comes back to the eyes. Right? So 317, uh, sorry, 318, we started, uh, we mentioned the eyes as a, a point to help us become more aware of our emotion. Here it's uh, becoming more conscious and cultivating are the clarity of looking at things. 
to be more present and to see, observe what you're looking at. Don't let so much go by unnoticed. And that's the kind of intelligence that's when you're more present in your eyes, that's an element of fire, it's an energy, it's an intelligence that's generated from inside your, your visceral cavity, not just an intellectual thing. Know your mind. the qualities and the tendencies, the strengths, the, the potentials, uh, your personal uniquenesses, your personal tendencies. And the third mention of the eyes, 328, third mention of the eyes, again, coming back to the principle of stillness. So what was it? Three, uh, 21 stillness in body and bodily energy. To actually be able to get that kind of stillness in the eyes, to keep the energy in and keep the eyes from moving. Yogananda, uh, when I was studying, reading his teachings, he, he said, and you have to be able to get your optical nerve to become perfectly still in order to see and penetrate and open your third eye. He'd like to get very uh, descriptive in the yogic the esoteric yogic process. So the, the, the drishti, right? The more, more still it is, the better your reference point for movement, to recognize movement. And here, right? This is much more closely related to the thoughts of the mind, even than uh, 321 the bodily, making yourself invisible, your, your whole presence. So here we're getting more minuscule or more acute with the stillness into the eyes. Then he goes down to the navel. So there's a jump from head down to gut, the second brain in the, the uh, belly the navel center. The Buddhist also emphasized the navel center. Build up the energy uh, a lot to help uh, improve a lot of health issues, improve your vitality and understand your the symmetry of your of your bodily functions. It's kind of cool to go through these these ones starting from uh, twenty six, right? To you know sit in in a meditative uh, posture and practice and spend a little time at each of these places and uh, invoking the, the aspects that Patanjali mentions in each spot. Uh, the belly, right? The, if the belly is, becomes more full, it's settled, it's very grounding settling for the energy, settling for the mind. 
And if the, the digestion becomes healthier, uh, not just in terms of what we eat, but also all the things that we consume through our senses, knowledge, things we read, uh, gossip, all kinds of things that we consume, discussions we consume, yoga sutras, we consume TV shows, we consume uh, gossiping about stuff that, yeah, uh, it's just entertainment. If, if we're able to process it, that's a kind of a different, another way of saying digest it, then we can give voice to it. So 30 is throat center. If this is healthy, then it can have a voice if it, you're, if you understand the experiences, you digest it. You're able to absorb, assimilate it into your, as a part of yourself and not uh, have indigestion, you know, anxiety or unresolved uh, feelings from things that have happened to you. And then when we will be better able to express it in a positive way. And so potentially when he talks about the throat center, but doing Sanyama meditation on the throat center, he says it gives that you, you overcome thirst and hunger. Because if an experience happens to us, that leaves us feeling unsettled. We're not able to digest it properly. Or we're not able to give, express it, or express ourselves from how that experience affected us. It, it, it's unsatisfying. Right? That's another way of saying that you're, you're thirsty or you're hungry still. There's a, still a sense that you, you're not satisfied. But if the navel center is strong and you're able, so you're able to digest and assimilate the different things that you consume, the different experiences you have, uh, then it'll be settled in your system. There won't be residual uh, undigested things that cause confusion in your mind that you that you'll be able to give voice to it or or not give voice to it but you you're at ease with it so you're no longer thirsting and hungering to complete the experience So the navel center is very important, the belly. The navel center, uh, it's a, the place where the heart energy and the pelvis energy join together. It's actually the place where all the nadis have a, have a connection, but specifically in our pranayama, in our alignment, our asana practice, the aligning the, the strength from the legs and hips and coordinating it to get the waist straight so that the heart energies can communicate through that navel center with the, the leg and pelvis energies. Prana, expanding. Apana, holding together. And where those two energies fuse together to create digestive energies is the, the navel center, Nabi Chakra, or Mani Puraka Chakra. Uh, 
Oh, there's one more on this page. So we need stability again. Wow, a third time Patanjali brings up the issue of stability. No wonder Patabi Joyce was so into stability. <laughs> he, he really wanted, you know, he just wanted us to be able to keep our mind uh, focused and uh, gain stability. And from that, then uh, the wisdom would naturally unfold. Uh, but I think it's helpful if we study uh, some spiritual uh, wisdom so that when our experiences mature, when our life experiences matures, the seeds from having studied the philosophy uh, can sprout. They have a, a fertile ground to sprout. Otherwise, if we just practice and we don't get direction, um, I'm not so sure that the wisdom, the, the right wisdom will, will sprout. Maybe it will. Debatable. Thoughts, questions? So the Kordamanadi, the third place for stability is to get the movement in the chest to be stable. So that the, the spine and the head are not moving with the breath. So the next place he goes from uh, thoracic cavity, Kordamanadi, is up into the head. And so if you do the, if you try this, you start with your eyes and then your mind. And then again, your eyes, try to get your eyes stable. First, when you when you go into your eyes, you just be clear to look. Even if your eyes are closed, what do you see inside? Become more aware of, of what the eyes are seeing. And then uh, getting the movement in the eyes to be stable. And then coming down to the navel and letting some sensation, some prana uh, accumulate around the navel center. And coming up to the throat letting some sensational prana energy accumulate and then down into the chest, like a, a base, a pedestal, that the head, the neck and the head are supported by the pedestal of your rib cage. So we hold the, the chest steady, then the rest of the body will also become steady. Chest is where the movement of the breathing, the biggest movement in the body, the, the most primordial movement, the heart and the lungs. So we get this steady, then the low back and the head will also come to steadiness. So then we can come up from the rib cage to the head. And in the head, we want to turn on all the lights and feel and see and feel the, the head center, right? From the, in the center of the head where the spine joins in with the brain, right? Where all the senses plug in from the in and out of the brain, the ears, the olfactory, your, your nose, your sense of smell, your eyes, uh, not sure the tongue, but the, the, definitely the, the ear, the nose and the eyes, they bypass the spinal column. They don't go through the, the spinal column, through the neck, all the other peripheral nerves, the nerves go uh, down through the spine and out into the body, but the senses go directly into the head center. We illuminate this energy and this, this uh, Patanjali uses the word Siddha, right? like the Siddha, the enlightened beings. 
So the energy of our head becomes more like the siddha. Our perception becomes more clear, so to speak. Or he also says, if you want to communicate uh, or receive instruction or visitation from enlightened beings, you use this center to invite them to come in, come to you. Two interpretations of the words. And, and then uh, 33, Patanjali's style of giving us a blank check, whatever else, whatever other processes you might have right, to uh, awaken your own intuitive insights, become more aware of different aspects of yourself. Those are also valid. And that will also give you right, the entrance into the heart. So this is a process, all these different, from the asana, the pranayama, and going through the different uh, samskaras in ourselves, through how we listen, uh, how we unconsciously or consciously are expressing ourselves through our, our eyes and face, uh, how we're able to be conscious uh, with our body uh, and manage the impulses that, that circulate through our system. Uh, and then going through the, the ones starting from the head and in the body that we just went through. But all this is making us more qualified to, we know so much more about our, our self, our being, than we did be at the beginning of the yoga process. So the heart being the center of consciousness. So when we, by kind of gathering around and going through like it's kind of a training or, a, you know, passing all these layers of ourselves and uh, waking up to like, oh yeah, I, not only can I do things like this, but I also, I've been behaving like this. I've been such a jerk and I really like don't need to be so impatient and I don't need to, you know, I have like so many, uh, I'm so well justified. I justify losing my temper at people uh, because they're, they're stupid and they deserve it. And, and like, now I see like, that's not, uh, that doesn't help myself or them. It just creates more problems. And, and uh, actually those people, uh, they're just venting because they're pent up. They're not really behaving stupid be because they're consciously being malicious. Uh, so we learn all kinds of things about ourselves. And uh, a lot of stuff get, getting out of the way to prevent us from being able to, to get into the heart. So at this point, Patanjali says, uh, uh, more or less, we have a full understanding of our mind. Chitta samvita. Hridaye chitta samvita. If you do sainyama meditation on your heart. Sound reasonable? Am I making this up? Daydreaming? I mean, I like to be like eight years old and daydream and make up what all this stuff means. Uh, and I try to get myself to go through the process, but I'm so lazy. <laughs> of 
Questions? Comments? There's a Sunny. Yeah. Hello, Sunny. Okay. So that's a good place to stop. And we can pick up and we can get the last. There's just a couple more to go, two pages. So, okay. Thank you very much. Hanamesham Klesha Baduktam. Keep practicing. Hanamesham Klesha Baduktam. No new special techniques, same thing. Om Tat Sat Om Swasti Prajabhyaf Paripalayantam Nyayena Margena Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmane Bhyaha Shivamastu Nityam Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Prajanyaha Prativi Satsya Shalini Deshoyam Shobritaha Brahmana Santinir Bhyaha Aputra Putrina Santu Putrina Santu Pautrinaha Adana Sadana Santu Jeevantu Shradam Shatam Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschit to Kabag Babet Om Shanti 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 Om Asatoma Sakamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityor ma amrutam gamaya Aum shanti 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 Aum Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Avashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Brahmar Panamastu